What up, what up? Welcome to Sports Theory. What I want to talk about today is possibly the greatest team that you've never heard of, all right? Now, the team that I'm referring to is the 1977 Atlanta Falcons. The 1977 Atlanta Falcons, um, they were 7-7, seven and seven, so, you know, they weren't the greatest team ever. Um, and it was a NFL season. It was in 77, so it was only... NFL seasons where 14 games were played. So that may be the reason why you don't know as much about this team as you should. Um, and the reason that I'm covering this team is not just for the statistics. You know, now they got some great statistics. And statistically, they're one of the greatest NFL defenses ever. But I made this just to show a little bit about the origins and how it's changed the defensive setup and play calling on the defensive end. Because what they were doing at this time, nobody had done it. So it's just a groundbreaking what they did. And it's uh, it's real interesting to talk about. Now, before I get into it, let me give a shout out to some of the people in the YouTube community who actually inspired me to take a look at this team. I was doing some Falcons videos and we got into some deep discussions about uh, Falcons issues. And, you know, I live in the Atlanta area, so I've heard people talk about this 1977 defense before, but they talked about it as if it was one of the greatest Falcons defenses ever. Now, I confirm that, and looking deeper into it, it's actually one of the greatest NFL defenses of all time. Just, you know, every of every defense, this is one of the great NFL defenses. Now, whether people realize it or not, so shout out to the YouTube community for putting me on that and um, introducing me to this great team, all right? So let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I'm going to start from the ground up and explain to y'all a little bit about the defense, how it started, and uh, how they attacked. Now, this defense, again, is the 1977 Atlanta Falcons team. The defensive coordinator was Jerry Glanville, and the nickname for this team was the Grits Blitz. And it was called that because that's what they did. That was their main um, tactic, was to load up the box, send a lot of people at you, cause confusion, get to the pass all right they had some hard hitting secondary they had some hard hitting guys in the secondary they had smart linebackers and they had real tough defensive linemen all right now if that style of play sounds familiar to you if that sounds like the 1985 bears then you're paying attention because that's actually where they got that style of play from all right that Loading up people in the box, hard-hitting safeties, smart middle linebackers being like quarterbacks on the field, all right? Big-time defensive end, defensive end, defensive ends who can stop the run and get to the passer, all right? If that sounds like the 1985 Bears, it should because that's where they got the play style from. Remember, this Atlanta Falcons team was in 77, all right? 77 now. So they came a little while before them Bears, so... Um, you know, they did a lot for revolutionizing the game. And like I said, uh, Buddy Ryan in Chicago, he watched this, um, he watched this unfold, uh, while he was a deep, while he was the defensive line coach in Minnesota over the purple people eaters in 77, he was watching the Falcons, what they were doing. And he, um, copied the tactic and he used it now we know that happens in sports all the time if there's a certain scheme or something that is hot all the coaches do it but uh buddy ryan when he went to chicago um the year after in the 78 season um you know he had he had the athletes to pull it off he had the athletes to uh pretty much run it to a team perfect it that's why you see that that's why you hear hear so much about that 1985 bears team because the scheme was perfect and the players were perfect so that's a little backstory of it like i said it was started by jerry glanville in 77 um and it's the same defense that uh was used by the bears in 85 all right so that right there is just enough to really look at it in awe when you really see what how, how the bears use it how they perform with it that's one of the greatest defenses ever ever that's my favorite defense of all time I would imagine the majority of NFL fans, that's their favorite defense of all time because um, it was the most exciting defense that I had ever seen uh, as far as when I look back and when I researched for that time, they were way ahead of their time. So, you know, that's just a little backstory for that. So let's get into the 77 Falcons team and see how they competed on the field and how their stats um, measured up. Now, again, it was a 14-game season, all right, and – 
this team was 7 and 7. It was only 28 teams in the NFL at the time. All right, and their offense was ranked 25th. So they had a pretty bad offense. Um, their star quarterback, Steve Bartowski, was coming off an injury, um, off a serious leg injury, I believe. So the offense was struggling. But what people loved about this team was the defense. And any time, the defense pretty much bought it every game. Now that I'm looking back into the statistics, the defense brought it every game. Even the games that these guys lost, they were real low-scoring games. And like the first half of the season, all the losses that they had were – under a one score was under seven points so it was a lot of close games they had a lot of close games they had a couple one and two point games um or, or excuse me where they lost by one and two points all right and all the games are real low score so even when this team didn't necessarily play up to their standard they still played good because teams didn't score whether they won or loss whether they won or loss teams rarely scored on them all right a lot of teams get a lot of field goals all right and i'm gonna get into that a little bit more so Let's take a look at the stats for the 1977 Atlanta Falcons, the Grits Blitz. I want to start off by saying the special team blocked nine kicks. All right, in 14 games, they blocked nine kicks. So that tell you how special uh, the special teams are. All right, and anytime you got a special team like that, um, you probably, because those are reserve defense guys. So anytime you got, most of the time. So anytime you got a special teams that's really going all in, um, you probably have a great. You probably have the the blueprint to a great defense. All right, they had um, a tandem called the Kamikaze Kids on the special teams, and they were always pinning teams back or getting a big hits, and they also blocked nine kicks. So that's incredible for special teams. Now they were number one in in total defense. They had five players with three or more interceptions. They were number one in pass defense. They were number 11 in rush defense. They was number four in scoring defense. And they were number two in takeaways, all right? So when you look at these uh, statistics, you really can get an idea how dominant they were, all right? All these super important statistics, they were number one, or they were in the top ten. Only in rush defense were they out of the top ten. All right, so when you dominating with take with takeaways and scoring defense, you you got a super fast defense, you got an athletic defense, and you have a defense full of ball hawks. All right, I don't even know if they used that term back then, but that's what they were. So let's talk about a couple of them. Now, one was definitely Roland Lawrence. All right, he had seven interceptions. He was a first team All Pro. He also went to the Pro Bowl. All right, so that's a ball hawk. Um, he was a cornerstone of that of that defense, the top player in the secondary. Um, it was another guy uh, by the last name of Bias um, who was a great playmaker as well. And y'all got to remember now, this is 1977. So for, you know, for a guy to have seven interceptions in a 16-game season now, that's pretty good today. All right. Roland Lawrence had seven interceptions in a 14-game season in 1977. So, you know, this is just a really dominant defense, and they're dominating on every level when you have a player or a cornerback with seven interceptions and you're, and you're, number, you're number seven overall in sacks. So you stop in a run, you're getting pressure on the quarterback, and you, you're, you're doing everything right. Um, if with, with these stats, all right. They had another ball hawk at middle linebacker, and I compared this middle linebacker. I'm – I'm not comparing him skill-wise to Mike Singletary, but I'm comparing him to when Buddy Ryan got this blueprint. He seen the middle linebacker for the 77 Falcons named Ralph Ortega, and he just plugged Mike Singletary in that spot. All right, when he took the reins um, in Chicago, like I said, he, uh, Buddy Ryan was a defensive lineman for the Vikings in 77. He was over the Purple People Eaters. He seen what was going on in Atlanta, and he stored this game plan, this blitzing scheme, the Grits Blitz. He scored it. He stashed it in the back of his head, pushed it to the back of his mind. When he got in Chicago with the right people in place, he went on a crazy run. And like I said, uh, Ralph Ortega was was the Mike Singletary of this defense. Now, Ralph Ortega had four interceptions, and he had five fumble recoveries. That's a ball hawk, man. That's an absolute ball hawk. If you're a middle linebacker um, and you got four interceptions and five fumble, fumble recoveries, you got a nose for the ball. You know where the ball is. You fly into the ball. You move into the ball. Um, and uh, this defense, the, the, the numbers that these guys put up in 77 would be considered good numbers today. So, you know, they was balling in 77, man. Like I said, Ralph Ortega, four interceptions, five fumble recoveries. He was a ball hawk. He was everywhere. And he was one of the cornerstones of this defense too, man. So 
Shout out to Roland Lawrence and Ralph Ortega. Um, they was big time players in the '77 season, man. They was big time players. They was the cream of the crop on the defensive end. This team itself was the cream of the crop of defense in the NFL. The offense just struggled, so not many people paid attention. All right, now again, like I said, they were seven and seven. Um, offense did have some struggles. Um, but the defense gave up 3.7 yards per play, all right? They gave up 3.7 yards per play. That's not even four yards per play. So every time you line up, every time you go to the line of scrimmage, you would be lucky to get four and a half, four to four and a half yards, which we know that's a great number. Uh, anytime you allow a team under four yards per play, you're doing something right, okay? Now, all, all of this that I'm talking about, putting the guys in the box, the middle linebackers, the seven interceptions that the cornerback had, and their style of play blitzing, because it is called a grits blitz, that created a psychological advantage for them, all right? And this is something else that Buddy Ryan utilized in 1985. They talk about that psychological advantage a lot that the Bears had because they blitzed so much. Sometimes the blitz, is, the blitz didn't even have to be called or the blitz didn't have to work. Just the fact that the opposing team knew that you blitzed so much, that caused problems for them and that put holes in that game plan the 77 falcons kind of started this they did this as well they were one of the teams with a big intimidation factor like the purple people eaters around that time it was a jets defensive line like that with mark gastineau and all them the new york sack exchange the same way the uh get, get, that psychological disadvantage because you knew they were coming and you knew what their repertoire was, sacking people, getting to the quarterback, getting to the backfield. That created a psychological advantage. And looking back at the film, you can tell these uh, quarterbacks and the running backs and even the receivers knew that they were coming, and they kind of feared this defense. Like they, you know, they, they were on edge, and it made them adjust their game plan before they even stepped on the field. So they were winning before the game even started. They were already in the quarterback's head just off of the aggressive style of defense that they play, and they used that to their advantage. All right, and like I said, Buddy Ryan adopted this as well. When you get to the line and you're shifting and the defense is shifting, the quarterback's calling plays and the middle linebacker's calling plays, that gets in a, a player's head. You know, when when you go up to the line and the middle linebacker calls out the play that you're running, it's like, you know, that's demoralizing because they already know your play. You're just basically waiting to get hit and probably not get any, you know, sufficient yards. So that gets in a player's heads and that – that does damage to a certain extent, um, and they were one of the pioneers of doing that, all right? So now that i talked a little bit about that defense, um, let's look at the Bears' defense, all right? The 1985 Bears, like I said, they adopted this grits blitz scheme, all right, and they just turned it to the 4-6, all right? It was, it, it was called 4-6 after Doug Plank, the safety, was number 46. Now, they were number one in total defense. In 1985, they were number three in pass defense. They were number one in takeaways. They were number four in yards per play. They only gave up 4.4 yards per play. And they only gave up 82 rushing yards a game. All right, so that number one in total defense, all right, they were number three in pass defense, all right. That that Falcons was that Falcons team in seventy seven was number one. They were number one in takeaways. That seventy seven Falcons defense was number two in takeaways. All right. The eighty five Bears gave up four point four yards per play. That seventy seven Falcons team gave up three point seven yards per play. So do y'all see the similarities there? With both of those defenses, all right. Buddy Ryan looked at the grits blitz in Atlanta in seventy seven. And he, like I said, he stuck that game plan in the back of his mind. So when he gets into when he got into Chicago, he had the athletes, he had the All Pros, he had the Hall of Famers. All right. And I want to give a shout out to another lineman that I forgot about, named Humphrey. Um, and I'm drawing a blank with his first name, but his last name was Humphrey, and he was a great defensive end as well. Those were like the three tiers. Humphrey led the defensive end, Ortega was the guy with the linebackers, and Roland Lawrence was the guy in the secondary. And they made a great, great team. Um, they they were in some extremely close games. If you really go and look at their record, man, they probably should have won maybe 10 or 11 games. They was in some close, close games. Um 
and, and, and I wish they would have won more games because this defense would have definitely got more attention. And like I said, it's really not the statistics. statistics. It's not the wins or losses or even the incredible statistics, statistics that they have that I would want people to know about this team. I would want people to know about this team because they gave birth to one of the greatest defenses, all right? That lining people up in the box, rushing people, confusing the quarterback, hitting the quarterback, even at, even if you don't get the sack, hitting the quarterback, just being physical on every play. The Bears used that, all right? And it was first used in 77 with the Grits Blitz. Jerry Glanville created that Grits Blitz, and this is one of the greatest uh, defenses ever. I mean, they only gave up. 129 points in one season, all right? And just as a side note, um, this 1977 Falcons defense went up against Walter Payton um, in 77. You know, not since we're comparing that 85 Bears team, and of course Walter Payton was on that team. How do y'all think he did against the Falcons? He had one of his worst games. All right, he did not run for 100 yards against the Falcons. Against that 77 Falcons defense, Walter Payton did not get 100 yards. I don't even think he got 90 or 80. I think he was in the 70s, 60s, the 60s, 70s, maybe 80s. But he did not run for 100 yards against his Falcons defense. So that's another testament to the uh, toughness of this team and the skill of this defense. Anytime you hold Walter Payton under 100 yards, shoot, holding Walter Payton at 100 yards, you know, that that's considered a job well done when you consider how much – he used to run over teams and how many yards he ran for. So to hold him under 90 or 80 yards, um, you know, that's just a testament to how good the defense was. And it just goes to show how many things they were doing right. So uh, I just wanted to take a look at the 1977 Atlanta Falcons. It's one of the greatest defenses, defenses ever in NFL history. <clears throat> Like I said, Humphrey, Roland Lawrence, Ralph Ortega, they was big-time players in 77. Jerry Glanville created this grits blitz. And uh, <clears throat> Buddy Ryan was in Minnesota, the defensive line coach, watching, soaking it up. And when he got to Chicago and became defensive coordinator, uh, he, had a, uh, he had a group there who were uh, – in their own class as far as athleticism, as far as football IQ, as far as strength, speed, and power. And when he got with that, and when he plugged it into that Bears defense in 85, you see what happened and won a Super Bowl. So, again, I want to give a shout-out to the Falcons. I want to give a shout-out to everybody in the YouTube community who encouraged me to take a look at this team. Um, it was a great team, and it was very well worth it. So, that's that's all I have to say, man. 1977 Falcons Grits Blitz, one of the greatest defenses in the NFL all time. Comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Um, sports, sports theory, I'm out.